the Illinois Treasurer's Office Women's History Month awardee for outstanding commitment as an elected official goes to Robin Gable. Assistant Majority Leader Representative Robin Gable has been representing the 18th District since April of 2010. She has a strong commitment to serving the people of Illinois as an advocate for women, children, and families. She served as the executive director of the Illinois Maternal and Child Health Coalition, a nonprofit advocacy organization from 1988 to 2010 when she took office. Her legislative priorities include affordable access, accessible health care, environment and sustainability issues, education and economic development. And she's been a leader in many more. She has a BA from Beloit College, an MSPH from the University of Illinois at Chicago School of Public Health, and an MJ in Health Law from Loyola University of Chicago. She has one daughter, Lila. Representative Gable, thank you very much for joining me and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have I been proud, to, proud and honored to work with you on several bills, including children's higher education savings programs um, and a variety of other issues. Uh, but let's, for our listeners, give them an idea of what inspired you to run for public office. You had been involved in Springfield and government for a while, but what, uh, what flipped that switch for you? Thank you. Um, so, as you said, for many years, over 20 years, I worked with a policy and advocacy organization on children and, and women's health. Through that work, I was able to get 2 million more children and their families covered, health coverage, which was very important, through policy changes. I did that as an advocate. And when the opportunity appeared where the, there, there was an open seat where I lived, I said, well, I should run. I should run for office because I can do even more as a legislator. I can not only do policy around children and families, but I can also do policy around the environment, about workforce issues, and uh, I decided to take the leap. So uh, after having worked on the other side of the rail and now working on this side, uh, my question is, would you encourage others to run for office? And if the answer is yes, uh, what advice would you give them? So absolutely, this is an incredible opportunity to do good. We, we pass laws that help millions of people, 12 million, Illinoisans every every year, and it's a great opportunity to do good. I would absolutely encourage others to do it. Um, if you're interested, I would encourage you to get involved um, both in your community and politically. Um, I think it would be great to meet people in both of those arenas, and uh, and you would bring much more to the table when you when you have um, some experience in in doing some work, either in the community on a particular issue. Uh, so. That, that's how I would start out if I was interested. Right. And, and this is a, a little bit of a setup to you here. I mean, maybe some of our listeners say, well, I'm not a lawyer. I haven't worked in Springfield. Maybe that's not for me. What would you tell those people who are doubting whether uh, they have what it takes to run for office? So the legislature is made up of all kinds of people. Actually, at this point, probably the, the smallest number of lawyers are here. We have social workers. We have pig farm owners, we have regular farmers, we have people who are in insurance, we have people who are uh, own, uh, own um, uh, 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 cemeteries and things like that. We have a whole variety of people who serve, who serve as legislators. So I would say everybody brings their own unique perspective um, and the goal is to represent your community as best as you can. And I think it's that you diversity. Can learn the process. You can easily learn the process here. Yeah, and I think it's that diversity that makes the legislature stronger, having a variety of different backgrounds and uh, experiences. Now, serving the General Assembly is always difficult, but these last couple of years seem to have been especially difficult. Uh, I've been had a front row seat for this, but for our viewers, how has the pandemic impacted uh, your time in the General Assembly? And how has it impacted time with your family? So uh, I'll answer the first part first. So our work with the General Assembly has continued and particularly in the beginning, it was even more intense as so many of our constituents needed so much help, um, which, we, which, we, which we did. We, we tried to figure out where to get them services, how to get them services, how to deal with the community, with the nursing homes, 
um, and uh, and it, there was a tremendous amount of work all the way through, um, and uh, and the responsibility of keeping people calm. That was what we had to do as well. So um, in terms of family, I mean, the pandemic made family life easier, as I'm sure it did for many of you. We were able to be at home, and uh, and although we were on Zoom practically all day, I still had lunch with my husband, which was really nice, not something we could normally do. Um, and we were lucky that we both still had jobs um, and, and kept busy and, and did our work, but um, we're, we were able to spend a little more time together, which was very nice since I'm a relative newlywed, uh, only, only four or five, four, almost five years ago now. So it really allowed us to, to bond and spend more time together. Now, as we're coming out of the pandemic and we have, you'll be having more in-person meetings, now, I, know, I know a question a lot of people who think about getting into elected office ask is, you know, how do I manage all the commitment and time with my family? So if you can think back to pre-pandemic and look forward going forward, um, how do you juggle family and work in your district and traveling to Springfield? And what advice would you give for someone who has, who has that concern? Sure. Um, you know, I would, I would say that you have to be very intentional and you have to be very organized. So you have to know that when you spend time with your family, you have to make sure it's quality time. You can't just be there. You have to really um, set aside your work for a little bit of time and, uh, and really be there with them uh, because they know if you're there and you're not really paying attention. <laughs> so you have to really pay attention and be concentrated. And, you know, this is a skill of being able to focus. You know, we used to think that multitasking was so important. And I think now I believe focusing is more important than that. Um, so, you know, you schedule your time, your family time, and then your work time. And you also make it clear to your family what is work time. And when you're in work time, that's what you need to focus on. So. Uh, Robin, I was having this conversation with someone just the other day and how I used to think that I could multitask and, you know, I have a Zoom open and then I would get an email or I would get a Skype message. and I thought I was doing everything at once. And what I found is I was doing everything poorly at once, and you are spot on. Focusing is, is a skill. It is difficult. Now, rather than focusing on some of the bad parts of the job or so, um, what are your favorite parts of your job? Uh, both the, the, the office, but also then what are, what legislation, other than legislation you worked with the treasurer's office on, what are you most proud of? So, you know, I'm one of those lucky people where I enjoy, enjoy all aspects of, of my job. I like people. I like meeting people. I like working with people. And I also like policy. So the policy piece is great. And then, you know, I enjoy going out in the community, going to events. I also enjoy the campaign side, knocking on doors, getting to know people. I'm not afraid of, um, of raising money. So it's, it's actually, I, I, I'm pretty good, well suited to this job. I enjoy all of it. And um, I would say some of the other uh, issues that, I'm, that I've, I've worked on, one has been um, automatic voter registration, the strong belief that we have to get as many people registered and to vote and voting as possible, that that's the essence of our democracy. And, uh, and we really need to make sure that that can happen. I've been doing that since, since the 80s. So uh, I am very proud of the work I've done around, around voter access. Um, I've also passed some important work around um, health care, uh, making sure that um, that people have access to affordable health care and also protecting our youth. I mean, I, early on, I passed a bill to ban uh, tanning beds for teenagers. Um, anybody under the age of 18 is particularly because the CDC came out and found out that uh, just one exposure to tanning beds uh, under that age can cause a 30% increase in melanoma, which is the most dangerous kind of skin cancer. So um, there have been many bills I've, I've passed to protect our youth. And, um, and then one of the big bills I worked on last year was um, the, the CJA, the bill to uh, create more renewable energy and to close some of our, um, our power plants that rely on fossil fuels. And to me, that also is our future we need to, to really work very hard to make sure that we end the burning of fossil fuels and increase tremendously our renewable energy. Through that bill, uh, there's gonna be 6 million homes in Illinois that will be, be able to be fueled by renewable energy in a short period of time. And for our viewers who don't uh, spend time in Springfield, 
uh, CEGES for the Clean Energy Jobs Act, correct? Correct. So you had mentioned uh, helping people to vote, and I know you have to get back for votes soon. I want to thank you for taking this time, but I really have enjoyed a lot of your advice. Any final bits of wisdom uh, for young people out there who are looking to be agents of change in their community? Uh, any uh, wisdom you've learned over life you'd like to pass along? Um, I would just say one, get involved. If anything interests you, get involved. And then uh, my other philosophy is just look for the open window and jump through. <laughs> so you never know what opportunities are gonna be available to you, but be, be aware, pay attention. Well, Representative Gable, congratulations again on being chosen for our award for uh, your commitment as an elected official. Thank you for all you have done for your constituents and for our state, and thank you for taking the time today. Thank you very much, and I appreciate all the work you do.